How's everybody doing this morning?
did not acknowledge my spiritual leader, man, Mr. Pastor, Apostle, man, yeah. the shepherd, the man that's after God's own heart, man. Ah. Yeah. Apostle Daryl and Cindy McManus. from this man of God. Amen. Everybody say that with me one more time. Not in this world. Not in this world. I want you to raise your hand if you've ever heard of a man by the name of Aurelio Barreto. They're already looking at me strange. They're already looking at me strange. Aurelio Barreto, you probably wouldn't know it if I was to tell you, but if I pull this picture out, I'm sure you'll know it. Have you ever seen this logo before? Mm -hmm. And this logo stands for what? Not of, this world. Not of this world. Not of this world. Now one thing that you have to understand about Mr. Barreto is in 1967, he was transitioned over to America from Cuba. He was transitioned over to America from Cuba. And what ended up happening was his family wanted him to live the American dream. So in the ninth grade, what ends up happening is this man ends up uh, uh, finding himself in a state to where he's fornicating. He finds himself into a state to where he's, he's engulfed in drugs. And he finds himself in a state to where he is just empty. Right, Jane, if you ever felt empty before. Yes. So he said, you know what? I have to become a millionaire. So what he did was he chased after the money. He chased after the possessions. He chased after all of these materialistic things that fade away briefly. And what happened was he finds himself being the CEO of a company with over 600 employees <laughs> under him. 600 employees under him. And as a result of that, he said, I need more money. I need more. I need more. I need more. He's very avaricious. Everybody say avaricious. Avaricious, avaricious is an extreme or an excessive, uh, an excessive uh, 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 desire for wealth and greed and possession. He wanted more. So he said that five million wouldn't do. Ten million wouldn't do. Fifteen million wouldn't do. He even got the twenty million dollars and he said he still felt empty. So one day he sends his child to school and the principal pulls him over and says, man, can I talk to you? He comes to his office and he explains the gospel of Jesus Christ to him. And as a result of that, this man says that he's broke. He broke all the way down. He hasn't cried in years and he gave his life to Christ. And as a result of that, as a result of that, he comes out with not of this world, a clothing line that will infect and impact millions and millions of people around this world. Everybody say, I'm not of this world. I'm not of this world. If you're, finding, if you're finding yourself in a place to where you're going after the materialistic possessions, if you're finding yourself in a place to where you're going after the, 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 the things that the physical eye can contact, I can promise you, you're going to find yourself being empty. Every single time, what you can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, it's not about that. Somebody pull up 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. I'm reading from out of the NIV translation. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Everybody say, I am not of this world. I am not of this world. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's the first two words say, you guys? I'm in, a, I'm in the NIV translation. Some of y'all have message. Some of y'all have King James. Some of y'all have Amplified. If I have y'all read it all together, it'll sound like the day of Pentecost out here. It says, do, it says what? Do not. Do not. Do not. This is a command. This is not a suggestion. He said, do not. What, you guys? Do not love the world. It never says that I couldn't enjoy the world. It's time out for all of these Christians that are walking on air shells. Yeah. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly in John 10, verse 10. Right. He that's wants you right. to enjoy life, yes. the absolute fullness of life. The Zoe life is what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Everybody say the fullness of life. The fullness, fullness of, of life. life. We have so many people that say, well, I don't really want to become a Christian. 
Because what am I, I'm, I'm losing so much. I got to give up so much. Yeah. But let me tell you something. The Bible says in Mark 8 verse 36, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Amen. You can gain all of the materialistic possessions. You can gain every single thing that your senses can conjure up. But I can promise you that at the end of the day, when you stand before the Father, he'll say, I never knew you. Yeah, that's right. Jesus. That's right. I never ever knew you. He said, Love not the world. He never said that I couldn't enjoy the world. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 4 says, Don't you know that friendship with this world is hatred towards God? Yeah. It's enmity towards God. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people who want to be friends with the world. Yeah. And if you know anything about friends, that's the covenantal word. That's not just a word that you can throw out there loosely. A friend is somebody who sticks closer than a brother. A friend is somebody who's going to be by your side every step of the way. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, verse 24. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Do not or love not the what, you guys? The world. Neither the what? The things. That are in the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Everybody say the world. The world. Now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. I know I have some theologians out here. I know I have some people who want to try to challenge me a little bit. So the first thing that you will tell me is like, okay, so it says love not the world, but John three sixteen says for God so loved the world. I don't care. Let's go. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. Now watch this. 1 John 2 verse 15 when it says love not the world, that's talking about the systems of the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it says the things of the world. Yes, yes. The system. These are the things that are designed to keep God out. Uh, John 3 verse, uh, verse 16 says for God so loved the world. That's talking about the people. Yes. That's right. That's right. He wants you to love the people without loving the things. Yes. And it's okay for you to have things. I don't want to say his name. 
But he might be watching. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was a basketball player. He was a basketball player and he was my he was my guy, man. He was my guy. At this time, we're running around and we're doing everything that we possibly could to run in the opposite direction of God. And see, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and no longer enjoy living. Don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. So what ends up happening is, I end up selling something, you guys. I'm walking around selling some syrup. Depending on this, sister. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm selling syrup. I'm selling oil. I'm selling codeine and permethazine. Uh-huh. We mixing that thing up with Sprite. Putting some Jolly Ranchers in there. I'm doing all those type of things. Everybody say, be real. Be real. Now, see, now that's, that's another thing that you got to watch in the church because there's a difference between being transparent and being cordial. Come on. Come on. And we got a lot of people that's being cordial in the church. They're yeah. there calling and transparency. Yes. Yes. Hey! Everybody yes. say, not in this world. Not in this world. Uh-huh. 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 So what ends up happening in this situation is I find myself, I find myself selling things that I shouldn't be selling. I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And and I put my homeboy on. I'm discipling him in a demonic way. And don't even realize it. I'm discipling him in a demonic way. And what ends up happening is, 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 I told him, I say, look, this is my code. Everybody say my code. My code. Right then, if you ever had a street code before. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, I ain't the only one out here. Don't you look at me with your religious noses. <laughs> So, so, so I ended up having a code. I ended up having a code. And with this code, what ended up occurring was I told him, I said, look, man, I don't sell to anybody that I don't know. If I don't know him, I said, I don't deal with him like that, man. I don't, I don't really mess with him like that. So he ends up finding himself in a place to where one night before class, he ends up getting tangled up with this one guy that he, that he, uh, that he never even met. He comes back to class the next day, and his hands are shaking uncontrollably. And he looked at me, he said, Huff, I'm done. I said, bro, what happened? He said, man, they came and they stuck me up at gunpoint in the middle of the night. And took everything that I, uh, and, and, and took everything that I possessed. And I said, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I broke down and I learned my lesson from that. Because his blood could have been on my hands. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something with this gospel. If you walk past an individual and you know the Holy Spirit gave you a prompting and an unctioning to pour into somebody's life or to present the gospel, when that person leaves you, their blood is on your hands. Mm -hmm. yes. My God. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Mm -hmm. Everybody say, love not the world. Love not the world. We said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, love not the world. These are the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For everything in the world. For what? Everything. For everything in the world, the cosmos, the systems that are designed to keep God out. This is the Babylonian system. The systems that are designed to keep God out. They're edging God out. Everybody say ego. Ego, ego stands for edging God out. You're edging him out of the equation. Is this making sense to y'all? For everything that is in the world, the what, you guys? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the what? Let's break those down real quick. Everybody say the lust of the flesh. What is lust? Lust, if you go and break that down in the Greek connotation, is epithumeia. Everybody say epithumeia. Epithumeia is where we get our English word from that. It's thumos. Thumos, or thermostat. It's the temperature that arises beyond your normal control. It's lasciviousness. Unbridled lust. It's a desire or a craving for what is forbidden. Whew, is this making sense to y'all? A desire or a craving for what is forbidden. The lust of the flesh is a desire or a craving for all of the passions or pleasures that are outside of the will of God. All of the passions or the desires that are outside of the will of God. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Everybody say the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Now this right here is a different one. Because this is a desire or a craving for possessions. I want things. I want things. I want everything that I have. I want it now. I want all of it. I want it all. And what ends up happening is you find yourself 
for, you find yourself in a place to where you will do any or everything. You'll trample over anybody just to get what you want. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, watch this. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot about me. Hosea 13, verse 6. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they became satisfied, when they were, uh, when they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot about me. Raise your hand if you've been believing God for something. Raise your hand if you've been praying for it. Raise your hand if you've been fasting for it. Raise your hand if you've been in the face of God for that specific yes. thing. But let me ask you a question. You've been praying and believing, but when you get it, are you going to turn your back and run on him? Come on. Woo. Jesus. Come on. Come on. You've been praying. You've been in his face. You've been fasting. Lord, give me this house. Lord, give me this husband, because I know how you just didn't put a ring on it, Lord. <laughs> Come on. Lord, give me this new car. Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me God is what? Uh -oh. Give me God is that, bro. The Bible says that the least has twin daughters named Give me and Give me more. Proverbs 30, verse 15 in the message translation. Is this making sense to y'all? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and what's the next one, you guys? The pride of life. This is the desire or a craving for position. Hey! The desire or the craving for position. You want titles. And you'll do anything you possibly can to get that title. You'll step on who you need to step on. You'll usurp who you need to usurp. You'll do whatever you need to do. Listen to me. I have people. I have people come come and sit in service two or three times and then tell me, Pastor, I got something to say. Pastor, can you put me up there on the pulpit to preach? Pastor, you think, you think, I got a word for the people. And let me tell you something. If you feel like you got a word for the people, you be prepared for the for the word that's from the outside forces that's going to come your way. You be prepared for the target that's going to be on your back. Because as soon as you step up into the forefront and you become a trailblazer, that's when things going to really get hot. Everybody say, take your time. Everybody say, take your time. Is this making sense to y'all? What's God? Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. I want you. I want you to cut up. I've been ready for this. Anybody? Anybody that come in this service? Yeah. Hallelujah! I've been waiting for that kind of stuff. You religious demon, you better get on my pot of and all that. Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. He said, "The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life." And what comes after that? What does it say? Huh? It comes not from the Father. But from what? The world. But from the world. But from the world. Everybody say love not the world. Love not the world. Are y'all being blessed so far by this word? Hallelujah. 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 Now this one thing that I want you to understand. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. Watch this. It says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. You have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Hallelujah. You have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. There's a lot of people who can walk around and quote the scriptures. There's a lot of people who can walk around and, and even try to rightly divide the scripture. But on the inside, they're full of dead man's bones. Paul said in Acts 20, verse 24, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Is this making sense to y'all? Now watch this. I need two people. I need two people. Come here, D. Come here, uh, Sean. Come here. Hallelujah. Watch this. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hold this for me. Hold this for me. Yeah. Come on, step up here. Step up here. Step up here. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. You have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Now just by looking at this, just by looking at this, which one would you automatically go for? Tell me. 
Y'all, y'all finna go for the happy meal, right? You gonna go for the happy meal blessing. You gonna go for what looks good externally. You gonna go for what's immaculate and just make it sense to you. But as soon as you open this thing up, what's that? A toy. A toy. See, a lot of people are going to church because they want a happy meal. They want something that's gonna make them happy. They want something that's motivational. But let me tell you something. Jesus is not a motivational speaker. He's a savior. That's right. God sent his son into the world to be the savior of it. According to 1 John 4 verse 14. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. But just by looking at this one right here. It looked kind of beat up. A lot of people really don't want this. Too much. Raise your hand if you really choose this over choosing a McDonald's box. You would. I would. Yeah, you ain't really too quick playing with me, girl. You ain't gonna choose that. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. But as soon as I start putting stuff out of what nobody cared about, I want that. I don't eat McDonald's. I do. It's gonna be something that nourishes me. And watch this. Watch this. It's gonna be something that nourishes me. But one thing that you have to understand is it's all about fruit. Yeah. Stop focusing on what you see externally. That's just right. because somebody can quote a scripture. Just because somebody lay hands and you go out. Just because somebody can prophesy into your life. Don't focus on that. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. Yeah. Hallelujah. They have to have an intimate relationship with Hallelujah. Y'all got me preaching out here. Hallelujah. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. Thank y'all, man. Y'all put that Hallelujah. on. Caleb's about to eat later on. <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Everybody say holiness. 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 Holiness is still right. The Bible says, be holy because I'm holy. First Peter 1 verse 16. I have to live a life that is consecrated to the Father. First uh, uh, Timothy, excuse me, or Titus chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 says that everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. But nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are defiled. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the, but they deny him by the way they live. They are despicable and disobedient, worthless for, worthless for doing anything good. Worthless for doing anything good. When I live a life that's consecrated and holy to the Father, there has to be a level of purity on the inside of me. He purges me. He cleanses me. He purifies me from all unrighteousness. Yes. Everybody say purity. Purity. How can a young person stay down the path of purity by living according to your word? Yes. Psalm 119 verse 9. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. That's what it's about. It's about living a life of purity and being consecrated and being neat for the master's use. Mm -hmm. with, with walking according to the word of God, there is no fear. With walking according to the words of God, you walk in power. You walk in boldness. You Amen. walk in strength. Yes. And you don't let anything yes. in you. Yes. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. Nothing yes. will stand in your way if you're living according to the word of God and according to the spirit and not the dictates of your flesh. That's right. Those that are led by the spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Can y'all handle a little bit more? Yes. Let's do it. 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 Now watch this. Watch this. I wrote something down. The modern church. Everybody say the modern church. The modern church focuses on status over statue. The modern church focuses on statue. Excuse me. Over status over statue. They focus on money over morals. Yeah. Status, everybody say status. Status. Over statues. Over statues. Now the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus grew in wisdom and in statue yes. and in favor with God and man. Yes. Amen. We want favor with God and man, but there's no growing that's taking place. When you grow in statue, that means that maturity has to take place. Yes. In the body of Christ, it's time for people to start growing up. Yes. It's time for you to start yes, feeding Lord. yourself. The Bible says that solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. Yes. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. 
Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Sorry. First Corinthians 13, verse 11. Are y'all getting enough Bible this morning? Amen. Amen. Everybody say maturity has to take place. Maturity has to take place. I can no longer be a baby tossed to and fro in the things of God. I have to develop my own personal walk and my own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it starts by me uh, developing an intimate relationship with him. Knowing him. Yes. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Being yes. made conformable unto his death in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. It's making sense to y'all. Everybody say I need to know him. I need to know him. I need to know him. I need to be a part of who he is. Yes. The Bible says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Yes. Oh my God in heaven. Yes. yes. <laughs> hey, Job 22, verse 21. Is this word blessing y'all so far? Yes. I have to become acquainted with him. Now watch this. There's a difference between me becoming acquainted with the Father and me coming common with him. Right. There's a lot of people who become common with you and not acquainted with you. Right. When I'm acquainted with him, that means that I become familiar with him. I familiarize myself with the Father. But when I become common with him, that means, oh man, you know, oh, that's just him. That's just Jesus. Yeah. Lord, here I am again. Now you, you know me, Lord. And Jesus said only in his hometown, amongst his relatives, and in his own household that the prophet was out on. He Come cannot on. do any miracles there except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Yeah. Man, are y'all getting enough fight? Yeah. Y'all pulling this. Y'all pulling this. Y'all pulling this. Y'all pulling this. Pullin this. Pullin this. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. Are we done? Let's get ready to wrap it up. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. I love your word so much. Yes. I love your word so yes. much. Glory. Watch this. Glory. Everybody say, I'm coming to an end. I'm coming to an end. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. 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 Verse 2.
I thank you for each and every person that's under the sound of my voice as well as the airwaves. And we just bless you for your faithfulness, your holiness, your righteousness, God. And I thank you for the truth of who you are. I thank you for the supernatural hedge of protection that's around us, our households, and everything that we possess according to Job chapter 1 verse 10. And I thank you for perfecting those things which concern us. And those who don't know you, we just believe by faith that they come into the absolute fullness of who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Y'all praise God here with me. Yeah.